Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be testing Windows 10 and Windows Defender versus a variety of malware. Earlier this year, we did a test where we put the same setup against some of the most well-known and infamous ransomware threats from the last five years. A lot of you seem to love that. So now we're going to repeat the same test, but this time we'll have Trojans, PUPs, all sorts of nasty stuff that you can find on the wild west of the internet. And we'll use the same automation tool, Malex, to conduct this test. Very similar setup. All binaries will be deployed from the shared network location, and we'll see how an up-to-date Windows system of today deals with these threats. As you can see, our protection features are turned on. We will also uh, start Process Explorer so we can keep tabs on what's going on in the system. Also, if you find these videos interesting and you'd like to see what's going on behind the scenes and some of the processes that are on your system, I highly recommend checking out the SysInternal suite, which is now managed by Microsoft. You can get it at sysinternals.com. But now we're going to get started with our testing. So opening up PowerShell, everything is initialized and ready to go. So all we need to do is basically execute our test script malix, which is going to automate all of this for us. Let's get testing. As you can see, uh, Windows Defender is already detecting some threats, and we have a proactive detection of around 77% so far. We have some uh, windows popping up. Now, I should mention that uh, this is mostly raw data that has been collected and pre-processed, although we do process all of these files for relevance and redundancy. There's still going to be false positives. There'll still be broken applications in here. So don't take the detection ratio itself as the holy grail. We're going to take a look at the system at the end of the test and see if there's some actual malware that bypassed Windows Defender or if it's just random noise. Now, even after closing out all the windows, we have one process that appears to be running. And for some reason, our test has stopped. So I believe Windows Defender may have blocked it. So we're going to restart. If we take a look at um, the other window that's running at the moment that shows us some of the activity on the system, this is the monitoring component of Malex. So we can see some of the windows that were opened and also some of the file handles that were opened. That's gonna tell us what files were potentially modified I don't see anything super interesting so far. It's the basic, you know, GUI applications that have touched some files. And other than the Windows Open that we've seen, there's not really a lot going on in the background. Okay, so our test script was terminated again, but this time I believe it was terminated by malware, which is quite interesting. Windows Defender is, of course, detecting a variety of threats. Another thing to mention is that this is a proactive test, so we're mostly looking at Windows 10 and Windows Defender's defenses in terms of how well they can prevent malware from entering the system. We're not necessarily looking at its uh, removal capabilities. And to me, it does seem like it has allowed execution of at least one uh, really nasty Trojan that's <laughs> creating random stuff on the desktop and uh, has a couple of active processes. So we'll wait and see if this amounts to anything. So what we'll do right now is we're going to reboot the system and we'll run a second opinion scan, see uh, you know, if we can quickly pick up what exactly this is. I wanna see if there's an associated startup item, if this is going to persist or if it dies with the system. Now I do want to give Windows Defender a chance, even though we're not necessarily focused on remediation, we're going to click on uh, start actions just so you know it can do whatever it wants. Let's see if that terminates this malware. No, well, not so far. Okay, I think now is a good time to restart the system. I mean, we've got <laughs> all sorts of combinations of four letters or four alphabets with all the different logos. Now I'm seeing a Process Explorer logo. I'm seeing, I don't know what it, what exactly this is. Is that blue screen view? Uh, we've got the 
disk logo, the Python logo, all the different uh, file extension icons. Now we're just going to reboot and see if this action continues. Okay, so we have successfully rebooted and I don't see the icons changing. <laughs> so maybe we have some respite from the malware over here, but uh, it could just be loading up in the background. We'll go ahead and try to do a second opinion scan if we can. Just load up Hitman Pro so we can get an idea of uh, the kind of hashes that are in here and um, what kind of threats are on the system right now. Oh, and interestingly, Windows Defender finally kicks into action. Unauthorized changes blocked by Hitman Pro. So, <laughs> it's blocking legitimate programs from accessing certain locations. Bit of false positive there. Okay, the scan is wrapping up and things are not looking very good. So, as you can see, we have a lot of different threats that are just categorized as malware. What concerns me is some of these seem to have infected the OneDrive folder, um, and there's this master threat under program data. It could be that this is all just one sample and these are the different variants, but threats are threats regardless. And uh, it seems we have found another one inside program data, Microsoft user account pictures. I do believe it probably made that folder up. And if we try to look at this for more details, you can see that it's a 432 kilobyte file. It's actually detected by Bitdefender as Verloc Gen 1. So in that case, if it is a variant of Verloc, then I guess Windows did prevent some of the damage uh, in terms of uh, its ability to encrypt our data because our data is still fine, or it could just be a coincidence that it didn't get enough time since we restarted quite early to reach most of the files. It was, however, able to persist in memory create multiple copies of itself, infect other files. It could be the protected folders feature actually saved our data in this case because it protected the files in our documents and pictures. But of course, that's still not ideal. There could have been a lot of other malicious activity going on. Uh, data could have been transferred to a CNC. That is unlikely with the threat that we have here, but it's all within the realms of possibility. So Windows Defender still seems to be struggling in terms of uh, proactively blocking threats as they enter memory. I mean, to be fair, it did block 80% of the threats that way, but 20% or so was still able to execute. I don't know why that is the case. Maybe there's a difference between the offline signatures or the on-access signatures and um, a deeper scan that happens once a process is in memory. Either way, the purpose of this video is not to bash Windows Defender. I have nothing against it. It's no specific purpose, really. The idea is to give you you all the information and show you what happens in different cases so you know how you want to set up your own systems. And I think I will do a repeat of this test with a slightly modified Windows Defender. We'll try to find the ideal setting for you guys where you can get a decent level of protection and not too many false positives. Since this is the default protection that comes with every Windows system, I assume a lot of people will be using it regardless. So it's really important to figure out how it works and uh, to put it to its best use. Also, if you're someone who works at Microsoft or Windows Defender, I'd love to hear more about the backend functionality. But